This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high-growth companies meet. I'm Galit Solomon for the Richmond Report. Markham, Ontario-based Gene News has one mission in mind. They want to reduce the number of late-stage cancer by 50% over the next decade. We sat down with the chairman and CEO of the company, James Howard Tripp, to learn how they plan to hit this mission and also why investors should be taking note now. Let's begin with the mission statement for Gene News. And from what I understand, it's about reducing the number of late stage cancer by 50% over the next 10 years. Some people might say that's ambitious, but we need somebody who's ambitious uh, when it comes to tackling cancer, don't we? Yeah, no, it's, it's very bold. It's mm -hmm. very bold, it's very aggressive. Um, but because we're focused on early stage detection, now, it do doesn't mean to say we can't find it late, um, mm -hmm. but you know, if you have cancer late, it invariably shows itself. The key is to find it early. If we can find it early, yeah, we believe we can truly have that kind of impact on late stage cancer. Okay. Well, let's talk about Gene News. What can you tell us about your company? Well, it's, um, it, it, it's a very bright group of scientists mm -hmm. that started all of this with, with amazing science. Um, I, I've been on the board for a significant period of time, mm -hmm. so I actually watched, watched the company grow in the beginning. And the things that were, were tossed around all the time was this is sort of Nobel Prize winning type science. Right. Um, and it, 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 it really has been. Um, there's a field called liquid biopsy which I think most people think of as circulating tumor cells. So in other words, if you have, if, if you have cancer, a little bit of it might circulate in the blood. And so if we can find those cells mm -hmm. and, and we can try and type them, we could tell you not only that you have cancer, but, but w where it's actually coming from. We're in advance of that um, because we work off of uh, what we've called the sentinel principle which is if you think about it, um, every disease process in the body is visited by all of the, the um, mechanisms the body has to actually control disease or fight disease or deal with it. Mm -hmm. We measure that process. And so we can do it off of whole blood, um, we do it off of what's called messenger RNA, mRNA gene expression. And um, you know, if, if, if you think about it, my usual way of doing it is if, um, if someone has frank colorectal cancer, we would expect them to have a gene expression profile that looks like that. Okay. If someone doesn't have colorectal cancer at all, we'd expect them to have a gene expression mm -hmm. profile that looks like that. And so what we can do is we can l do yours and say, okay, does it compare? Hey, relax, relax. Right. Mm, you got a real problem. You, you need to get this seen to as rapidly as possible, but we can also watch it as it begins to grow and develop in mm -hmm. terms of where. And so it, it's dynamic. It goes on each and every day. Right. And um, that's the exciting bit. Okay. Uh, now, is, are, are the tests uh, based on, on blood tests, or what do they yes. look like? You know, for, for sort of the, the, the average person who is uh, getting their head wrapped around the science of all of this. Perfect. The, the very simple part of all of that is um, it's just a blood test. Mm. We just want a tube of blood. Right. Um, and th that's what we'll ask you for. And if you look at it, if, if you ask most patients, 95, 98% of them will go, yep, how's my arm? You're welcome to mm -hmm. sample the blood. We're just so used to it. That's the very easy part. We do the complex part. Okay. It, it, it's a very sophisticated mm -hmm. process by which we analyze all of this. Um, but it typically takes only a couple of days, only two to three days, and, and we can then have the result and push it back again. But it also means we can do it time and time again. Mm -hmm. It also means it's not hugely expensive. Let's, uh, let's direct our, our attention to investors now. Um, and of course, investors are always curious about who is at the helm of a company that I'm about to invest in. What can you tell us about yourself and your background? Scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, being in healthcare all my life, mm -hmm. um, I started as a scientist. I started in R&D. Um, made the move to the commercial end sort of fairly, fairly quickly. Okay. But I, I, I probably describe myself maybe as a scientist businessman rather than a businessman scientist. Okay. Um, love, love the science. Business is easy. Right. Business is easy to, to sort it out. Science, science takes the time. You've uh, also indicated that you have a passion for both, for, for science and for yes, business. Yes. Which is crucial, of course, for what you do. Crucial. <laughs> I, I, I've had an amazing career where, where it's taken me and what it's allowed me to do, and it has always been enjoyable. 
and it is it, it always healthcare focused, always one foot in the science, one foot in the business. Okay, very good. And in terms of why investors should be taking note of this stock right now, can you provide us with three reasons? Yes, um, we're just beginning to grow. It, 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 through, through a complex series of reasons as we bought out the lab and got to own everything and then restructure it all. For us in a number of ways it, 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 it's a new beginning to part of the company. Mm -hmm. We've been at it for about three years now. Um, it's been a huge amount of work but we're at that tipping point where everything's falling into place, where all of the long hard work is falling into place. And so we've been pretty bold. We've typically stayed well away from making revenue projections, mm -hmm. but we've actually put out this year that we believe we'll do 30 million or more by the end of the year. Of this year? This year, okay. that's way above our break even point. So we expect to be uh, profitable this year. And we're shooting for a bil $2 billion revenue opportunity. And we think all of that starts now and it, it truly begins to, to sort of climax in about two years time. Any government involvement at all? Have you been speaking with government? Uh, and, and the reason I'm asking about this is because, uh, you know, cancer is, is something that touches so many of us. If if uh, you know if a person hasn't experienced it, they know somebody who has, um, and, and that's when government involvement might be. Yes. Yes. A good idea. <laughs> so so we're, we're, although we're part Canadian based and part US based, our um, reference lab is in Richmond, Virginia. So, mm -hmm. so we have a large reference lab in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and our focus, our commercialization focus is the US first. We, right. we, we will go all sorts of places afterwards, but first. And so the government, um, other than requiring, and, and there it would be FDA, FDA other than requiring that we work through physicians to make sure that um, you know, you're, you're ordering a, a test that could potentially tell someone that they have cancer, mm -hmm. you can't just do that lightly. You also need to make sure that they, they follow it up afterwards. Right. So we have to work through physicians. But it, we don't need FDA approval. Um, better than 98% of the tests in the U.S. are what are called LDTs, laboratory developed tests. They don't need um, FDA approval. So how do people know they're good? Okay, so, so two ways. Um, one, our lab is what's called CLEAR and CAP approved. CLEAR approval is um, U.S. government approval th that says you're running a lab and you're qualified to build the U.S. Mm -hmm. government. So that's, that's a very high bar to meet and you get, you get audited the whole time. The second is that we generally use New York State. New York State is second only to FDA in terms of rigor. And so we voluntarily actually put our tests through New York State for approval. Okay. It takes about two years to get there. It, it's a very intensive process. And once you have New York State approval, it, it's sort of a good housekeeping stamp you can put on it. I see. And we run from okay. there. Okay. I'm very curious. What was the inspiration behind the company? It, it, was, it was work being done between University of Toronto and Harvard um, in, on, on genetics. It, it was one of our founding scientists. And he was seeing this pattern, this gene expression pattern that seemed to reflect ongoing disease process. Mm -hmm. And he went, I'm absolutely certain that that's an underlying disease. And he started to dig into it. And some of the first area, in fact, was in the cardiovascular area. And it started to prove we moved, we moved into a series of other areas, but it really was that. It was there's something going on here that looks amazing. We have we have to figure it out. Right. Got it. Okay. Very okay. good. Very Thank welcome. you so much. Yeah. And to learn more about Gene News, head to their website, genenews.com. And if you'd like to learn about more investment opportunities, just subscribe to our channel. Thank you for joining us. I'm Galit Solomon for the Richmond Report. This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high growth companies meet. If you've enjoyed this video, please let us know. You've been watching the Richmond Club Report. If you've just come across this channel, please feel free to subscribe. I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting and profitable investment ideas around here. We'll see you again soon on the next video. Cheers, guys. Have an amazing and profitable day.